I mean, how many people have had a hookup buddy which then turned into a relationship or a marriage? Probably few, if not nobody, because when you engage with someone in a sexual way and kind of consider them to be a hookup partner or a friends with benefits, they're kind of just stuck in that category. It's really hard to go from just being friends with benefits with someone to then all of a sudden being in a committed relationship. Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rula Alani and today we are gonna be talking about why Tinder is ruining online dating. So I stumbled across two different research papers and studies that truly shocked me and I had to share these facts with you all. So these studies fascinated me because as many of you know, I'm a huge advocate for online dating, although I have urged all of my audience to stay away from Tinder. It's not to say that you can't find love on Tinder. One of my great friends who met her husband on Tinder and they are happily married. I actually have a video where I interviewed the both of them. If you want to check that out, I will link it up above. But Tinder has always been kind of a red flag for me just because of what the app stands for and who tends to download the app. So in this video, we are going to discuss the real reason behind why people use Tinder, what actually happens when people download the Tinder app, how many people are dishonest or honest in the process, and I will also be reporting the facts from the studies and then giving an overall review of the findings at the end to sum up my thoughts. Before we begin, I'm going to insert an image of an infographic that we are going to be discussing. And this contains many red flags that we need to talk about. A survey of 400 Americans exposed these truths. Three fourths of people say they have had a bad experience with someone they met through a dating app. One third of people don't consider swiping on Tinder while in a relationship to be cheating. That's definitely a huge red flag there. The next one says 13% of people have used a dating app during a date. During a date. That is just so sad that we live in a generation where people think that's okay. And last but not least, 27% of people have used a dating app or website while in a relationship. So these facts don't even stun me that much because the unfortunate thing is online dating is still relatively a new phenomenon. It's a new kind of experience, right? Because back in our parents' age, a lot of marriages were either just people you met around town, in college, maybe friends of your family. And this is probably one of the first generations where we have so much autonomy in choosing our partner and choosing who we fall in love with and being able to meet people from all over the world using dating apps such as Tinder. So I do believe that if you meet someone online on a dating app, you guys should definitely have a conversation about what the dynamic is going to be then. I know personally in my relationship, we met on a dating app and so we got off the dating app only once we were in an official relationship. This was something that we didn't even need to discuss. It was kind of just common courtesy, common respect. Sometimes you do need to have a dialogue with the person that you're seeing or dating or whatever it might be and ask them, hey, is it okay with you? Are you comfortable if I stay on this app? Okay, so first let's talk about the paper, Swipe Right Young People and Online Dating in the Digital Age. So in this study, let's first talk about which app was researched. Well, Tinder was by far the most popular app that people report using, with 77% of the respondents saying that they had used Tinder before. Now, there were other dating apps that were a little bit less popular, which include OkCupid, okay Plenty of Fish, eHarmony, Match, Coffee Meets Bagel, Hinge, Grinder, Zeus, Date Hookup. There's a bunch of these. Um, but we are going to be focusing on Tinder because as we can see, more than three fourths of the respondents report using Tinder. So the next question that the users were asked was why they used or downloaded the app to begin with. And this is when we start down the treacherous path of why Tinder is ruining online dating. So the number one reason why people download the app 
is curiosity. Curiosity. It has nothing to do with wanting to find a relationship, go on dates, um, find friends, none of that. Pure curiosity. 71% indicated curiosity as the motivating factor. 48%, so the second highest group, reported using the site to go on dates, so that's a good sign. 42% reported to find short-term romantic relationships, so almost half are downloading just for short-term casual hookups. 34% reported using it to find long-term relationships. So the smallest group of people are actually using the app to find long-term relationships. So this is why I have such a huge problem with Tinder is because I have many friends who download Tinder in the hopes of finding a quality, loving, healthy relationship. But as we can see, the majority of people are on there for curiosity maybe just to go on a date, um, possibly just for a short-term casual relationship, but the minority are actually using it to find long-term relationships. So it's just a little bit unfortunate because it seems that people just think Tinder is an easy app to find someone, but it's actually not. The same number of people who are looking for long-term relationships also report using online dating to seek sexual encounters or to hook up with people. So furthermore, 29% use it to meet friends or because friends were doing it and 8% indicated using online dating sites for other reasons, including distraction from a breakup, to meet other cool people from a relationship, whether it be romantic or a friendship, or moved to a new state. So the responses are kind of all over the spectrum as we can see with this study. Another website that I found also asked people why they downloaded dating apps. And once again, 29% said because they were curious. So that was the majority. 19% said because it was convenient. 15% were bored, 12% were lonely, and 12% were hopeful. The unfortunate thing here is we have an app where people are downloading out of curiosity because they're bored, because they're lonely, because it's convenient. So it's for really superficial reasons rather than to find true love or to settle down or to find a partner. So that's one of the main reasons why I have a problem with Tinder is because it tends to just promote a hookup culture. So the next question was what happened after downloading the app? So the most common response was going on dates. 55% said that they went on dates. 42% said that they developed short-term casual romantic relationships. 34% hooked up with people they met. 29% reported doing nothing. And the less common responses was meeting new people at 21% and only 18% developed long-term relationships. Most of the people who get on Tinder end up do going on a date. Um, they might have a sexual or casual relationship with that person, but not many people are actually forming long-term bonds or meeting friends or making those meaningful connections. This is when the study gets really funny. Now the users were asked whether they were honest or dishonest in the process of creating a profile and talking to potential matches. So the majority of participants, 70% of them, indicated that they themselves had not been intentionally dishonest to potential matches online. 19% indicated that they had and a few chose that maybe they had or they were unsure. So for those who said that they did lie or that they were dishonest, they said that the reasons or what they were dishonest about was what they were looking for in a relationship, their weight height, um, and those were basically the two most common things that people lied about. So what they were looking for and their appearance. However, this is where it gets really weird. Only 20% of people say that they lied, 
the majority of people thought that they were being lied to. So this is really interesting. It shows that the people on the app have an idea that they're being deceived, that they're being lied to. However, they believe that they themselves are not lying. So the majority of participants believe that they had been deceived and denied intentionally deceiving themselves. So these findings suggest that there's a disconnect between the percentage of participants who thought they were deceived compared to the percent that admitted to being honest. So we don't know who's lying here. Is it the people reporting that they're being honest or is it the other people who are saying maybe or that they're unsure but really they're lying a lot more than they're claiming. Okay, and now we are going on to our second research paper which is titled Swiping Right Face Perception in the Age of Tinder. This was written in 2019 and right off the bat, it says, quote unquote, Tinder is primarily a sex hookup app, which may also lead to romantic relationships, remains prevalent among users and the general population. So listen to that sequence of events. They're saying that it's a sex hookup app, which may lead to a romantic relationship. Well, let's just talk biology here, you guys. The natural way to form a relationship is to first form a friendship, is to first get to know someone, is to first go on dates with someone, to meet their friends, their family, whatever it might be, and then to possibly form a romantic relationship. I don't like how Tinder has everything flipped around where it assumes that simply off a swipe or off a physical attraction, you're automatically going to form a relationship with someone. I mean, how many people have had a hookup buddy which then turned into a relationship or a marriage? Probably few, if not nobody, because when you engage with someone in a sexual way and kind of consider them to be a hookup partner or a friends with benefits, they're kind of just stuck in that category. It's really hard to go from just being friends with benefits with someone to then all of a sudden being in a committed relationship. The fact of the matter is that a lot of people tend to categorize the people that they know, the, the people that they hang out with, and once you're categorized in a certain way, whether it be that you're just a hookup or just a casual um, friend, then you tend to stick in that category. I mean, that's just what happens, right? Think about men who get friend zoned. It's really hard to break out of the friend zone cycle because they've already been categorized in that light. It's hard to get out of the category and create a new identity. So just remember with Tinder, it goes along the expectation that you're gonna have a sexual connection with someone before you create a more meaningful long-term bond. So if that's something you're comfortable with, then by all means, but if it's something you're not, just keep Keep that in mind before you download the app. So in this study, it reported that they were looking at an online survey and it suggested that men were more likely to use the app for casual sex and relationships when compared to women. And on the other hand, women were using the app for friendship and self-validation. So furthermore, women appear to be more selective in their swiping decisions compared to men. So this makes a lot of sense that men are mainly using the app just for hookups, for casual sexual relationships, whereas females are using the app for self-validation, maybe knowing that there are men attracted to them. And lastly, some studies show that Tinder users tend to be more extroverted and open to new experience than single non-users. So when you're comparing people on Tinder to just normal singles out in the dating pool, they find that those on Tinder tend to be more extroverted, more open to new experience, and have low sensitivity to sexual disgust. So they don't get turned off as easily. Also, Tinder users may show lower levels of satisfaction with their face and body and higher levels of appearance comparisons than non-users. So now that we've gone over all of these findings, let's talk about what it means for just people like you and me and people who are interested in online dating and possibly considering downloading Tinder. Why do we believe that Tinder is ruining online dating? Well, first off, 
Online dating is a relatively new phenomenon, so we haven't really defined if being on an online dating app is considered cheating, if it's just considered friendly, if it's just considered like having any other social media outlet like Instagram or Facebook or Snapchat. What does being on an online dating app really entail? So that's definitely one of the reasons why Tinder could be ruining online dating because for those who are in a committed relationship, maybe they have not defined if they're allowed to be on Tinder, if that's okay in their relationship dynamic, or if that's actually considered infidelity. This also means that people who are on online dating apps such as Tinder don't really view it very seriously. They just kind of see it as having fun, passing time, and they're not actually using it for its intended purpose of finding a mate. So the second thing we need to discuss is that those who downloaded Tinder did so out of curiosity. It was not to form meaningful bonds or go on dates or even just create friendships. The majority of users believe that they were being deceived to, but then they don't claim that they were being dishonest. So there's a huge discrepancy and it seems that the people who are on Tinder tend to trust themselves, but not others. Tinder is known by the majority as a sex hookup app. That already in itself should tell you that it's ruining online dating. Next, a huge fault in Tinder is that women and men both join Tinder for very different reasons. Men do it to find casual sexual relationships, whereas women do it for self-validation and to potentially find friendships. So this shows that there's a huge disconnect between the men and women who are joining Tinder. This can not only lead to confusion, but definitely a lot of disappointment because we have a man and a woman who are both coming on the app and they are not seeing eye to eye because they're looking for two different things. Women and men tend to have very different swiping habits, so women tend to be more selective, whereas men tend to swipe pretty quick. Also, Tinder users tend to have kind of less confidence when it comes to their face body, yet they use appearance-based comparisons when judging others. So this shows that people on Tinder tend to be a little bit more superficial and they care a lot about the external rather than really getting to know someone for who they are, their character, their values, and their morals. Overall, I think it's really important that you understand the dating climate and environment on Tinder before you download it, especially if you're looking for a high quality partner. It's also crucial to realize that when we download an app like Tinder, we believe that we have so many options for different mates, but we tend to forget that Tinder users tend to be very similar in their beliefs and in what they're looking for. So just remember that just because you're on an online dating app doesn't mean you have more diverse selection than if you were to go out in the real world. Comment below your thoughts on Tinder, if you download it, what you think about it, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching.